Whitey. What's that? Uh, a little bit more, just a touch more. That's great, great. Okay, we're rolling. Go cell phones off. Down. Cell phones yeah. off. Cell phones off. So, Howie, when you got the news, what was the first thing you thought when you heard the news overnight? I couldn't believe that it had been captured in the U.S. I, I thought it had been gone for 16 years. I, I was surprised earlier this week when the FBI announced they were going to be running PSAs in, uh, in, in America. I thought it was in the U.K. somewhere that it had been stuck after 9-11. So that's what surprised me. I thought they'd always get, I always thought they would get him, but I didn't think they'd get him here. For people, our, the piece that I'm really doing is really about the, the, the two brothers, the, you know, the, the princes of Bo you know, the kings of Boston, as it were. For people who aren't from Boston, you know, in 10 seconds or less, who is Whitey Bulger? Whitey Bulger is a uh, serial killing sociopathic uh, gangster who, uh, who co collaborated with the FBI to destroy all of his rivals in the underworld and became the number one gangster in the uh, city of Boston and with a great deal of help from law enforcement. How, how much, at his height, how much power did he have? Well, it was estimated that his net worth was up to $50 million. And uh, the, by the time he, uh, he left, uh, the mafia in Boston had been pretty much wiped out by his friends in the FBI. And uh, he, he, had, uh, he had pretty much total control of the underworld. Um, and his brother, in 10 seconds or less, who was Billy Bulger? Uh, Billy Bulger was the autocratic president of the state senate uh, who uh, worked his way up through the ranks and uh, who everyone knew had a brother who killed people. Uh, and uh, it, was very, it was made very clear over the years that, uh, that uh, Whitey was not afraid to, to hurt anybody and, and that certainly helped Billy's rise to power. Explain this. This seems odd for people, I think, who didn't grow up in Boston. So you're telling me that, that, that Billy Bulger was one of the most powerful politicians in Massachusetts at the same time his brother was the most powerful mob boss in Massachusetts. Yes, uh, there, there's a videotape of uh, the former mayor of Boston, Kevin White, talking about uh, the relationship between uh, Whitey and Billy. And uh, his exact quote is, if my brother threatened to kill you, you'd be nothing but nice to me. And I think that's the, that was the reality at the State House. People were afraid of Billy Bulger because of his brother. Billy Bulger, a colorful figure? Colorful figure, had the St. Patrick's Day Parade, was uh, covered on 60 Minutes, uh, yeah, uh, you know, trying to be, tried to be a likable rogue, but occasionally the, uh, the, the petty tyrant uh, uh, came to the fore. But a big, you know, this is, this is a large, you know, in the, in the vein of James Michael Curley and, and everyone else, I mean, this is a larger-than-life Massachusetts Paul, right? Right, exactly. He had, a, he had this St. Patrick's Day breakfast every year, and uh, during uh, presidential election years, uh, all the candidates from both parties would call in if they didn't show up in person just to uh, kiss his ring. And uh, he, he, had a, uh, he, had a, he had a winning way about him, and he could sing the, the old Irish ballads. And, and of course, then they would make jokes about Whitey. And, you know, Whitey was treated like he was some kind of uh, young Jimmy Cagney figure, you know. Uh, the, the, uh, the reporters of the Globe always used to say, Jimmy keeps the drugs out of Southie, which of course was the biggest lie of all. Sorry, I'm just getting noisy here. Um, cult hero, why do you cult hero at all? He was a cult hero, I think. Uh, he, uh, again, the, there, there were people who sort of celebrated him, that he was, he was uh, like the, the last of the uh, really powerful Irish gangsters. Again, a Jimmy Cagney type of uh, figure. Uh, you know, the Italians were, you know, kind of uh, surly in, in the North End, and he was out there uh, walking around and uh, talking to reporters, a, case, a few reporters. He, uh, and, uh, he, yeah, he was a bit of a cult figure. They, they, you should read the Globe, uh, co the Globe stories about it. I mean, they're just, they're just unbelievable. You know, the only, oh, he just, the only time he and Billy see each other is when they say, pass the gravy on Sunday at Ma's house. And he gave Father, uh, Father O'Malley $200 for the lads at, uh, at uh, St. Uh, St. Augustine's Church. You know, all, these, all this nonsense when the guy is flooding South Boston with cocaine and people who, who, who uh, mess with him disappear. I mean, he threatened to kill me. I, I'm a reporter and I wasn't the only one he threatened to kill. Um, when was the hit? When we took out a hit on you, or was it, a, it was just threatened to kill? He, he well, he supposedly he he uh, he, he and his uh, gunsel, according to a book, they were lying in wait for me uh, in the cemetery across the street from my house, and they had the rifle trained on me, and then they uh, backed away when uh, when they saw I walked out with a uh, with one of my daughters. I, I don't believe it's a true story, but that's that that is the story. How did one Bulger son end up? Senate, how did one Bulger son end up Senate president and another a mob boss? 
Well, they, I mean, they both came out of the slums, but uh, the, the reality is that both of them ruled their uh, respective worlds with an iron fist and uh, tolerated no dissent. I mean, there they were, when you get right down to it, more similarities between them personality-wise than there were uh, differences. What happened if you crossed Billy Bulger politically? What happened if you cross Billy Bulger politically? Well, a guy once did refuse to uh, give him a, a court, uh, a, a, his, one of his fr a guy once refused to give Billy, uh, Billy, one of Billy's friends a court officer's job, and uh, they made the joke at the next St. Patrick's Day breakfast that judge was holding court in a Winnebago. <laughs> a guy fired uh, Whitey Bulger from his no-show courthouse job, and uh, he didn't get a pay raise, and neither did his employees for five years. So bottom line, in general's terms, if you cross Billy politically, if you cross Billy politically, uh, he would uh, make sure that you suffered greatly. And you cross Whitey in, uh, in organized crime, what happens? Uh, either, either you vanish or you get shot down in the street or more likely the FBI comes and knocks on your door and takes you away. These guys do seem really colorful. They're, they're really colorful except uh, when, when somebody says they're going to kill you and, and then you realize who do I go to to tell someone that I've been, my life has been threatened? They, they control the political arm of, this, of the city and the state, and they control the, uh, the law enforcement arm of the state. I mean, it's, it, it was not, uh, it was, it was not a, uh, a golden age, uh, as much as it, it may seem that way to, to a TV viewer tonight listening at home. The 1970s and 80s in Boston were, a, uh, in, in many ways, a, a reign of terror by the Bulgers. Anything else you anything else you'd want to add to this? You think? No, I think you, you, you had it. Just one thing you might need to correct. I think you said uh, courthouse job to James Bulger, right? Yeah, to James. James yeah. And you said Whitey. Is it is. Oh, it's the same guy. Same guy. Okay. Same guy. Yeah, right. James, yeah. Yeah, James Whitey. No uh, and that picture is amazing. And we're rolling audio. Come, sorry. Are we rolling audio or? No, we're running camera mic. You want to? Okay. All right. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. How many years were these two guys? at the top of their game. How many, how many years were these two guys running things in their own spheres in Boston? I would say about a quarter century altogether. They, for 25 years, they were uh, the uh, un, undisputed kings of the city. Despot of the city. Good. One thing is just a technical thing. Um, when uh, Ms. Ortiz said uh, a sense of indication, we were starting uh, over on the other Agent so, so we're in the middle of a pan. That's we're right. in the middle of a if you want to ask so, over, so go back to you want to go back to the U.S. Attorney. So yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, let's go back to the U.S. Attorney and see if, if you could repeat that for us because we were starting on, the, on your right. colleague. The question was about the mixture of emotions on a day when Whitey Bulger is in custody. Your thoughts? My thoughts is that it's a, a sense of vindication, uh, especially uh, in a situation where for a number of years. The FBI was subject to a bit of criticism uh, and accusations uh, that they were not really interested in finding Mr. Bulger. And so uh, I can certainly attest to certainly the time that I've collaborated uh, with the FBI since becoming U.S. Attorney uh, that they've been very persistent, dedicated, and committed uh, to uh, pursuing uh, efforts that would result in finding uh, Mr. Bulger. Uh, and I say that in terms of the resources that were added, the active task force that was in place, and even recently we uh, had a deputy U.S. marshal join the team as well. And as um, the special agent uh, in charge, Deloria, just said, uh, they were always looking for creative ways of finding uh, Mr. Bulger. And uh, it was great that uh, the, the most recent one that was tried this past week uh, paid off. And then just to wrap up, going back to you, um, Sixteen years, cited in various parts of the United States. You go there, check it out, he's not there. Mexico comes up, Canada comes up. Tips that he might be in London. Tips that he might be in uh, Europe, perhaps even uh, Italy. Um, how hard is it to track down someone who's smart, crafty, and who doesn't want to be captured? How hard was it to, to catch this guy? It is very hard. It's a very hard process, Pierre. Uh, individuals are, are very um, uh, deceptive in many ways, and particularly uh, 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 individuals who are charged as alleged in this indictment. He was uh, a master of disguise. I saw it in the, in the, in the bullet FBI uh, wanted poster. Hunting fugitives is a very difficult task, and we pursued Mr. Bolger and Ms. Grieg across, literally across the face of the earth uh, uh, to various locations. 
you know, we're delighted that that search has ended now for the uh, Commonwealth, citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, for the victims as alleged in the indictment uh, in the charging documents, and um, uh, for the greater law enforcement community here in the Boston area and across New England. I think we're good, guys. Jack? Just give me 10 seconds of you talking just so I can get a wide shot. You want me to talk? Yes, please. Okay.